YouTube, this is Lucy from kbeautyhobby.com and today's video is about my evening skincare routine. I've done one of these in the past when it was just a very basic routine, very quick, and today I'm going to show you all the extra things. So this is quite a bit longer than my most basic one and it has all these optional things in it like a peeling gel and some patches and masks and so on. So this isn't something that I do daily, this is something that I do occasionally, maybe twice a week, sometimes once a week, just depending on what it is. And I don't always do all of these things all in one evening, sometimes I'll do exfoliation one day and a sheet mask the other day, but for the purposes of this video, I try to put as many things together as I could without overwhelming my skin. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just pull my hair and I use uh, these little phone cord looking little hair ties. Mine are from Germany but I know you can get them in the United States now. I've seen some at Ulta and Amazon has tons and tons but I like them because they don't pull on my hair when I take them off and they also don't cause breakage and don't leave little indents. Then I'm going to put on this little thing. Okay. This is my little headband from Glowy Co. Um, it's a new key beauty store. They have a warehouse in California, so they ship from California. This is not a uh, sponsored review. They did send this to me as a gift, but it's glowyco.com. And if you enter Key Beauty Hobbit as all one word at checkout, you get 15% off. So do check them out. They have K Beauty and Taiwanese Beauty, Japanese Beauty. Like I said, this isn't a sponsored review, but I'm just sharing a coupon that they gave me with you and I find that they have some interesting things on their website that maybe some other stores don't have. But anyway, I usually use something like this just to keep my hair back. This specific one my uh, five-year-old really liked and she thought it should be hers but I won <laughs> that battle. Okay, first thing I do after this is take off my eye makeup and sometimes just a cleansing oil is enough but the mascara I have right now does not come off with cleansing oil. It requires a waterproof makeup remover. So I have this Misha Perfect Lip and Eye Makeup Remover and it's for waterproof makeup. And it's a two-phase remover. You can see the two different layers in it. So let's shake it off. I use these, I think these are the Face Shop. They're cotton pads, they're multi-layered. So each one, has five very thin pads in it. And usually just two is enough for me. I do prefer mascaras that come off with just cleansing oil, but I wasn't reading the description closely enough when I ordered this one. And it turns out that it's waterproof. So I actually bought this remover specifically to take off that waterproof mascara. Okay, so I saturated these little things with it. Then I'm going to put them on my eyes. And this is where I need to be patient and keep them on for a, few, a little bit, for a few seconds maybe, to let the remover start breaking up the makeup. Don't want to start rubbing. In general, rubbing is not a good thing for skin, especially for delicate eye skin and and by allowing the remover to sit there for a bit you let it start working and then the makeup comes off much easier without any harsh rubbing. I still have to kind of very gently move it around of course to get the makeup off but that's nowhere near the amount of tugging that it would take if I didn't let this sit on my skin first. This is why I do not like makeup remover wipes. I feel like 
people tug on their skin way too harsh when using makeup remover wipes so there it is it's coming off and i do have to look off camera just a bit occasionally to make sure i have a mirror right behind my camera here but i'm just making sure that i got all of it off so i do not want any leftover makeup there first of all Decorative makeup is not a good thing to leave on your skin, but second of all, I don't want to wake up with raccoon eyes tomorrow. Okay, I think it's all off. Next is a cleansing oil or cleansing balm. Cleansing oil, if you're not familiar, or cleansing balm is designed to break up any oil-soluble impurities like SPF, which of course everybody should be wearing every day, BB cream, CC cream, foundation products, things like that. Anything that you couldn't remove with just a water-based cleanser alone and a good analogy for that I think if you still if this concept doesn't make sense think about what happens when you get olive oil on your hands and then try to wash them off with soap that oil still remains and the soap doesn't usually remove the oil completely same with our makeup the water-based foaming cleansers usually cannot remove makeup properly all the way and SPF and some of it remains and can irritate the skin, clog the pores and so on. The cleansing oil I'm using right now is by Purito. It's the From Green Cleansing Oil. It's clear. <laughs> Yay, I just spilled it all over my sink. Do I cut that out? Probably not. Anyway, I'm a real person. Okay, anyway, I scored some in my hands. And your hands need to be clean and dry for this. And your skin needs to be dirty and dry. And I just very gently massage it all over, including my eyebrows. Now, if I was not using a special eye makeup remover, then I would actually be putting cleansing oil on my eyes as well to get all of that makeup off. But since I already cleansed my eyes, with a makeup remover, I'm not going to put cleansing oil on it. I should say that I typically do these things, except for the eye uh, part. I usually wash my face in the bathtub. I feel like that's a little bit less messy. If stuff drips down, it's not a big deal. But of course, for the purposes of this video, I chose to be fully clothed. You're welcome. <laughs> and shoot it next to my sink. Okay. So the next step would be to add water and massage once again. And you'll see that the cleansing oil is going to emulsify and turn white. And this is why you want to make sure that when you're applying it at first, your hands are dry so that you don't start the emulsifying process too early. So I got some lukewarm water. I'm just gently massaging this and you can see see how it's turning white like especially here on my nose this is the big difference between a cleansing oil and something like olive oil or coconut oil there are some people who prefer to use oils that what I would think of as oils for cooking on their faces and that's fine if that's what you like, but they don't emulsify, so then they're much harder to remove. So, see how it's all white here? And now when I rinse it off, it's going to come off nice and clean and not leave an oily residue. I rinsed off the oil. The next step is a foaming cleanser. And the foaming cleanser is a water-based product that will take off whatever is left after the oil plus any of the oil residue. It is totally fine to simply foam the foaming cleanser in your palms. You don't wanna just squeeze it onto your palms and then slap it onto your skin because that can be too harsh. It's too concentrated. It's always a good idea to first add a bit of water to your palms and then work, work your foaming cleanser into a lather and then apply it. Or you can use a cool little device like this one and since we're doing all the extra things today i thought i'd show it this is a uh, noonie marshmallow whip maker uh, there's some other ones um, like i think let's see who makes it 
a Tude House has a blue one, and I'm sure there are other brands, but it's not a necessary product, but it's kind of fun. So it's a little thing here, and it's just an empty a little container, and you put a little bit of water in it, just a little bit. There's a line right here where you're supposed to put water. Okay, and then I'm using this um, April Skin Real Calendula Foaming Cleanser. I've talked about it on my blog, keepbeautyhobby.com. I will put links in the description box for everything I'm talking about. So I am going to squeeze just a little bit onto this bubble maker. Just a little bit there. Okay, now this is the fun part. So you stick it in, hold down the slit here, and then just go to town on it. Take out all of your pent up aggression. <laughs> all right. Ooh, That's so messy. Okay. And this is what happens. See all that foam? So I'm just going to scoop it out. This is super messy. I don't know how big YouTubers make all these fun, like, get on ready with me videos and everything's so clean and nice. I'm just splashing everywhere. Okay. It makes this really awesome foam that's very gentle. Of course, in my normal life, I would also be washing my neck, but for the purposes of this video, I don't feel like making this into like a wet t-shirt video, so I'm just going to stick to the face, but of course don't forget your neck in your normal life. Okay, if I want to be even more extra, I would use this uh, Foreo Fofo thing I have, Foreo Luna Fofo, yes, okay. It's a little silicone cleanser and you press on it and it Vibrate. I do not think this is like a must-have item. I mostly just use it because I have it. It came in one of those subscription box things and I always get really excited about subscription boxes and then it all ends up being stuff I wouldn't have bought usually. I mean, I like the like the consumable subscription boxes like face, uh, like skincare and makeup type things. But the ones that actually have items in them, that are housewares or workout things, I'm not a big fan. But since I have it, I use it and it does tend to maybe degunk the pores a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to rinse all this off. The foaming cleanser is all rinsed off. Usually I will put toner on wet skin if I'm not exfoliating to lock in all the moisture. However, I am going to use a peeling gel today because we're doing all the things and peeling gels need to be applied to dry skin. So I have this little mermaid face towel that is clean. Again, you don't want to rub. Really, the less friction, the better on skin and hair. So I'm just very gently patting it dry and then my hands also have to be dry, so I just dried those off. I am going to use this Misha Super Aqua Peeling Gel. I really like this one. I did hear some people say it was too harsh for them and I know the brand makes, I think it's green. Um, there's a different version of this that's supposed to be more mild, but for me this is fine. I have combination skin and it can get red or irritated if I'm not careful, but I haven't had any issues with this. So peeling gels remove anything that is missed by the cleansers. They don't need to be used every day. Usually once or twice a week is enough for most people, but it's just an extra exfoliating step that is good to do occasionally. It comes out like this and just apply it and start massaging. And as I'm massaging, it's going to peel. And that's from the cellulose in the ingredients. Like some, sometimes people think that's dead skin, just slothing off, but it's not. Some of it is dead skin. As that cellulose pills, it does take with it 
dead skin particles. And Lab Muffin channel has a great video on this where she looks under a microscope on this. And if you're curious, check it out. The very first time I used the peeling gel, I couldn't believe how smooth my skin was. And that was, what, like three years ago now? Four years ago? It's much, much, much more gentle than a physical scrub. And it doesn't scratch the skin, which is good. I don't know if you can see. You can see like right here, these little white things. That's, that's the, that's a peeling action there. And just like with everything else, now we're going to rinse that off. And it's good to use lukewarm water. I try not to shock the skin, so I usually don't use cold water or hot water. I use warm water to avoid shocking the skin and doing any potential damage to it. With all the rinsing I've been doing, I did make sure to rinse off my eyes as well because I don't want any of that makeup remover from the very first step to be left on the skin because that, that would not be beneficial to the skin at all. Next step is a lip exfoliator. I don't do this every day. Sometimes I don't even do it every week, but we're doing all the things today, like I've said. This is Aritam Ginger Sugar Lip Scrub and it has sugar particles in it. It's basically like a lip balm with a scrub scrubbing particles inside. I just take a little bit and rub it on my lips very very gently. You don't want to overdo it. And then once again rinse off. The cleansing part of this routine is over. The next steps would be hydration and moisturizing. So I'm going to go in with a toner and my skin is still moist, which is a good thing. I like it moist when I put on the toner because it helps seal in all of that extra water. We don't want to lose it. What I'm using right now, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Zykos, at least that's how I would say it. And it's a pink collagen toner. The company sent it to me for free, um, no strings attached, uh, but I'm using it now and it's pretty good. It's like a gel texture. I'm going to show you this here too and then I'll mix some in my hand. So I'm also using this Neogen Real Vita Power C. It's a vitamin C powder and because it's a powder, it is shelf stable, it does not have to be refrigerated and it can be mixed into any skincare step like a cream if you want or a toner or serum or whatever. I mix it into the toner because I want it to be pretty much the first thing that goes on my skin. Like I want it to be the first layer because I think it's more effective. I do have some little pigmentation spots here and there and some freckles and I, I think this will help. I'm already seeing some results. So it comes with this little scoop. You can see that. I'm just going to add one scoop into my toner mix it into my palms or mix it in my palms and then apply it. try not to spill here's the powder here's the toner it comes with a little pump and it's a gel i don't know if you can see that i don't want to repeat the cleansing oil incident and spill it all over my sink so i just mix these together and the powder dissolves pretty quickly and then i gently apply i like this toner but the scent is kind of strange to me. So the first thing that I sense when I apply it is rose and it's very nice. But then it has like a some weird hint of mint in it. <laughs> I should review the ingredients and see if there's peppermint oil in it because, and it's a strange combination of rose and mint. Uh, it's not bad, it's just kind of unusual. All right. So that's on. Now I'm going to do two things here. A sheet mask, but first hydrogel eye patches and I'm going to kind of use them at the same time. So I have these every day's diamond dust eye patches. I'm not sure if there's actual diamond dust in it, but the label says yes. I love this package because it has this lid that seals. When you close it and you push right here, all the air gets out and it seals really well. The purpose of hydrogel eye patches is to plump up the skin. Some of them say they reduce dark circles. 
I'm not convinced that that can necessarily be done externally, but okay. And they also reduce puffiness if you use them in the morning. I store mine in, mine in the fridge. I think it just feels nice when they're cool to the touch and also if you're applying them for the reduction of puffiness purposes then the cool temperature also helps with that. The reason I put them on before a sheet mask is because I don't necessarily want sheet masks on my eyes or like around my eyes. Those are very sensitive areas and also just a little multitasking. I could do patches first and then maybe sheet mask after or sheet mask first and patches after but I think it's nice sometimes to do them at the same time. You will see how this one's sliding around and that's pretty normal for hydrogel. Um, it basically needs to warm up to the temper to your skin and then it then it adheres really well but at first they're super super wet with the serum that they're saturated in and at first they don't really stay up very well. All right, the sheet mask I have is this Taiwanese one by Love More, and it's, it says loofah and aloe vera. This came from the Glow Eco company that I talked about in the beginning. I think they say loofah here, but what I think they mean is cucumber because this looks like a cucumber. It talks about it being a refreshing mask, and I've used already a few of these, and it does smell like cucumber, so I think it's cucumber. So I opened this and when I first saw this I got so excited I thought the mask was blue but it's not. That's just a little protective layer. So it's a natural silk mask is what the label says. So I'm just unpacking it. It came sandwiched in between this little protective layer here and the blue protective layer on the other side. And it's kind of funny sometimes when you see reviews online and people say the mask is crap and whatever and they were actually using one of these protection sheets and basically throw away the actual mask. Okay, so here it is. It's very thin, very soft, and it smells like cucumber. So I'm just going to apply it. And you see how small the eye opening is? So on some masks, the eye openings are larger, but this one like, hits me right under the eyelashes, which is another reason why I put on the hydrogel patches. Alright, wow, this is looking super attractive. <laughs> okay, it's kind of big, but that's fine. Like, I'd, I'd take too big over too small any day, plus we're all different as far as face shapes. Oh. So this has to stay on for 10 to 15 minutes and usually I put those on in the tub because the steam from the tub from my hot bath actually helps everything work better and I usually watch YouTube while I do this. But today I'm going to show you one extra step you can take. This is a, uh, this is a secret key massager but there are other brands that make them. And sometimes I'll take that and I'll just use it on top of the sheet mask to help the essence in it penetrate better and also just to stimulate the blood flow to the skin. It can help with sagging. I talked about this in my weight loss video. Some of you might know that I lost over 74 pounds. And in that video, I share my best tips on how to do that without causing a bunch of sagging skin, especially on your face. Okay, I'm going to step away for a few minutes, let this thing work, and then I will be back. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm back. So, the mask pretty much worked its thing. It's still pretty moist, which I like. Sometimes some masks, like even after five minutes, they start to feel dry. And if that ever happens, take it off right away. Because if the mask dries out, it will then start to pull moisture from your skin. Which is also a reason why you don't want to sleep in sheet masks. 
unless it's specifically made for that and you don't want to keep them on for longer than the instructions say. I'm gonna take these off. I really like these masks though. I think they're super nice. I haven't had Taiwanese masks very often. Like I had, I think, maybe a couple before, but nothing recently. And these are really great. And it's not sticky and not heavy. Sometimes with sheet masks, I might actually, to be honest, rinse them off afterwards. If they feel sticky and tacky, I think in 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, the mask stays on your skin. The skin absorbs whatever it needed to absorb. And to me, if there's still a tacky, yucky layer left afterwards, you can just rinse that off. But with this one, I don't have to. And you can just see, like I have some lines on my forehead already, sadly, but um, they kind of plump up afterwards. So I'm just going to pat in the remaining essence and discard all of it. You can, if you have time, fold the sheet mask in half and apply it to your neck and spend another 10 minutes or so letting the neck absorb whatever is left there as long as the mask is not dry. Sometimes after this step I'll go and apply cream right away or a sleeping mask but today it's been really crazy with the weather here. We have super cold mornings and very very cold days sometimes and then today was really warm and sunny and so there's like cold outside and then really dry indoor heat and my skin is just needing some extra stuff. So I am going to use this Claire's Fundamental Watery Oil Drop and I like to describe this as a face oil for people who don't like face oils because it's not oily at all, it's very light. So I'm just going to take the dropper of it. Squeeze it into my palms. It's a good idea to let the products warm a little bit in your hands before application. Sometimes that allows them to seep in better into your skin. And I learned that from a Chizu Saeki book. She's a very famous Japanese cosmetologist and she wrote a book about skincare and different anti-aging things. It's a very quick read. You should check it out. So I applied that. Okay. I am going to do three things now and in no particular order. I'm going to put on lip balm, eye cream, and a face cream. I guess I'll start with the eye cream. So I have this uh, Wamisa Chai Tea Eye Cream. The name drives me nuts. The word chai means tea. So saying chai tea is like saying tea tea on today's edition of things that drive Lucy nuts. Uh, another things in the category would be ATM machine because it's automated teller machine. So there's no reason to say ATM machine. And another one is pin number because pin means personal identification number. So if you say pin, you don't have to say pin number. Okay, rant over. So I'm applying the eye cream just on the bones basically in the orbital bone around the eye. You do not want to put cream on the moving part of the eyelid. So like the, the, the parts that move when you blink, cause that can make the product migrate into your eye and cause irritation. If you just apply it along the orbital bone, don't worry, it will slide around anyway and find its way onto the moving parts. I really like this eye cream. I think I'm almost out of it. It's very gentle and it unfortunately does not smell like chai. I thought it would, but it doesn't. But it's very gentle, light, doesn't cause any congestion or melia. Sometimes heavy eye cream scan. And sometimes I use it on my neck as well because it's very nourishing. So I just put on all this hydration on my skin, the toner, the sheet mask, the Claire's watery oil drop. I'm going to seal it in either with a face cream or a sleeping pack. I'm going to use this Purito sleeping pack today. It is a Dermide Cica Barrier sleeping pack. It is unscented and this was Purito's like crowdsourcing <laughs> project. I've actually followed it from inception. So for a while there on their Instagram, they would make polls or little posts asking, okay, what do you want? What kind of product do you want next? What do you want it to do? What kind of benefits do you want it to be scented or unscented? And Based on the votes, they created this sleeping pack with Centella in it, which is a very 
good anti-inflammatory and soothing agent and they put not just centella in it but also different derivatives of centella like azeotic acid and maticasocide and all those other hard to pronounce things it is very soothing moisturizing without being heavy and scented like i said and i really enjoy it i actually think it is nice enough texturally, like not greasy, not oily at all, that it could be used even as a cream in the daytime, but I use it in the evenings. You can probably tell I have some red irritated spots here, so I've been kind of gearing my skincare lately to like soothing and anti-redness products, and this one, this one fits that description. For lips, I either use my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I swear will never ever run out. That tub, it looked so small, but it is probably one of the first gay beauty things I bought. But right now I'm going to use this Jayastina. Um, it is, yeah, it doesn't say the exact name on it, but it's a Jayastina lip balm. It's very much like Laneige. It smells a little bit differently and the, the package is smaller, which I actually like. I have clean hands, so I just went ahead and dipped my finger in it. You can definitely use something like a Q-tip if you prefer. It does not come with a spatula. Laneige one did, but I promptly lost my spatula, so I just use my finger anyway. This basically almost feels like Vaseline, but nicer. But it helps with the dry lips, especially in the winter. You may have noticed that I go off camera or I will edit that out, but you'll probably see like some edits here in this video. That's because I have to keep rinsing my hands because I don't want, for example, my eye cream to be on my lips or this lip balm to be anywhere else. So I have to keep rinsing my hands so before I apply the next product. The very last thing I'm going to do is use this Liss Derm AC Control Spot. This is kind of an intriguing product to me. I think there's some other brands that make similar things, at least I've seen some things, and they all feature this pink powder. But this says to apply it at the end of skincare, so on top of cream, which is interesting, but it's this little doe foot applicator. And in the bottle, you can't see this on video, but on the bottom of the bottle is this pink powder, and then the rest of the bottle is kind of clear. And the instructions say if you have an active breakout, do not mix this. So do not shake it, just take it out and apply it. So that's what I'm going to do. See, it's pink. But then it says if you just have a problem area, which I assume if you have an area prone to redness, but maybe you're not actively having a breakout, or maybe if you just have a really big area, then it does say to shake it and then apply it. And I've tried it both ways, and I think it works the same regardless, but it does help things calm down. I'm not sure if it'll help this one. This one's pretty much healing, but this one could still be giving me trouble. So it basically makes things dry up a little and heal a bit faster than if you don't use anything. And I am speculating here, but I think the reason that it says to use it at the end of your routine is because if you simply apply it to bare skin with no barrier between the skin and this product, it might be too drying. But I haven't had any adverse reactions to it or anything, no peeling, nothing like that. It's been very nice. So this is it for my more involved version of my evening skincare routine. Like I said, I don't do this every day. Don't feel like you have to do all these steps to be successful with Korean skincare. You absolutely can eliminate a lot of these or you can use products that offer multiple benefits all at once. There are some cleansers, for example, that are two-in-one oil and foaming cleanser. There are all kinds of things. There are peeling pads instead of peeling gels. There are leave-on peeling products, sleeping masks, toners, etc. This is just what works for me. And even for me, it changes. I don't always do all of this with all of these products. I try to listen to my skin, which is what I always say at the end of my videos, but try to listen to your skin, see what works for you, find the products that are great and stick with them. You don't have to have a huge arsenal. You don't have to have hundreds of bottles. That's kind of why I do what I do. I try tons and tons of things so you don't have to, and you can just pick the things that sound interesting. And I do have, a whole video on fails, those happen as well. 
So check that out. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful, and if not useful, then at least entertaining. Please leave me a comment below, let me know what you thought. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. I will see you next Saturday. Until then, please have a wonderful week, and remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you very much.